Um, those of you who use Shoreline equipment are um, familiar with the uh, angle plate that the rotary table mounts to. And you've probably all run into the situation because, you know, what we're going to have to do is put a DTI in here and make sure that this is, you know, perfectly um, aligned in the, um, in the Y direction, Z direction. Um, and in order to do that, you have to be able to shift the plate back and forth. But the problem is, the way the plate was designed, the two screws that you need to get to to align the plate this way are blocked when you have the, um, the rotary table mounted to it. And I've always found that frustrating. I never did anything about it, but in this case, you know, I've explained before that some of the gears are very large and had they been mounted on here, they would have hit the table, or actually <laughs> gone below the table. So I had to raise the rotary table and the angle plate up, and in the process of doing that, I made this plate that rises, that, that gives me the extra height, and I brought the alignment screws out, so that now I can get to them easily. Um, when I'm doing when I'm doing the alignment, um, so I'm going to go off camera now and and align this thing. Um, I'm sure you've seen this done a million times before, but we, you know, with an indicator in the spindle, you know, we're going to run up and down and back and forth, and you know, twist the thing and get the angle right so that it's perfectly parallel to the spindle. I've now uh, aligned everything. The, um, the rotary table is perfectly um, perpendicular to the table and parallel to the spindle, um, you know, both in the y direction and the z direction. What I just finished doing is taking my edge finder and finding the back of my arbor and then I uh, measured the arbor, took half its diameter, its radius, and I advanced the spindle to the center point. Um, you know, just with an MDI command. Um, so now, so now I know that the spindle is exactly lined up with the center line. Um, of the arbor, and I've zeroed out the, uh, the DRO in my uh, control software. Um, if you recall, back in the beginning, I made um, ABS backers for all the gears, and this is really why um, when we cut the gear, the cutting tool is going to be moving in this direction and so that we don't get any breakout on the back of the brass it's nice to have a backer here um, so this is all pretty straightforward but um, I'll bring this on here Tighten that down. Now, if you recall a number of videos ago, I said that we were going to use this reference surface on the gear cutting arbor to determine the Z height of this gear. Again, using the technique that I showed you before by using a piece of paper that I know is 1 1,000th um, in diameter, I'm sorry, thickness. Um, I'm 
just going to bring this down until the paper, I don't know if you can see that, but just until the paper pinches, which is right there, and now I can zero my Z axis. Now what we want to do is measure the diameter of this gear blank. which is 2.313 inches. <coughs> and what I'm going to do now is bring the arbor forward and then down to the exact center line of this gear. And I mean, there's, there's just a little bit of math involved, but it's nothing complicated. As you recall, the boss that I created on here is the same thickness as, as, the, um, as the gear cutter, which measures 0 0.186 and a half. It's uh, 187. It's a um, So, if I come down half the diameter of the gear blank that I measured, plus, plus half the diameter of the cutter, I will end up exactly at the center line. So, the cutter should now be exactly at the, at the center line this way. So now it's just a matter of now the, how I'm doing this. Obviously, has a lot to do with how I how I wrote the the G code to do this. But um, in my particular case, the way I wrote it. I need to know exactly where the cutter is in this direction. So again, I'm going to use this piece of paper to determine when the cutter is just touching the blank. And I'm I want to make sure that I'm getting the outermost diameter of the cutter, which is, you know, right at the point of the tooth. So in my particular controls, uh, the way I, again, the way I wrote my G code, I want to set that distance to to Y zero, um, and then I'm ready to cut. All right, everything is set up at this point because I'm cutting so many gears. I wrote or took the time to write a, a G code program that was parameter driven, uh, uses subroutines and, and, and variables and such, but the only thing I have to enter into the program is the X start position, you know, off the gear, and then the X end position as it, you know, comes across and, and finishes the gear. And the other thing I enter is the number of teeth. Uh, the G code computes everything else, and I just sit back and watch. Um, for this particular cutter, the depth of the tooth has to be 0.133. Um, I do that in three separate passes. So I'm going to cut, uh, you know, a third of that distance, and then you know bring the 
bring the blank around so I cut all 56 teeth. Then I'm going to advance in another third, do it again, and then the final bit and do it a third time. And yes, I know that that's very conservative, but um, as I've stated before, that's the way I work. I've got the um, spindle turning at, um, or set to turn at 1400 RPM, and I'm, I'll be advancing the cutter, and this is conventional milling, I'm not climb milling here, but I'm advancing the cutter at um, a feed rate of 6. Um, so, I haven't done this before, so let's cross our fingers and uh, I'll start up the program. And it looks to me like I got this right. So this will obviously take a while, as you can tell. But it is cutting very nice teeth. Um, now, in this, because this was a, a trial run, if you will. Um, I've only got one gear blank mounted in the arbor, but once I'm sure that this is working, when I make the rest of the gears, if I have a batch of gears to make, I can mount, you know, multiple gear blanks on the arbor and then just cut them all at once. Um, As you can see now, we're on the final pass. The uh, teeth are taking their final form. This has been um, this particular gear with the 56 teeth. Looks like it's going to take 45 minutes overall to cut um, with the. But like I said, uh, later I'm going to be stacking gears and cutting them in a group, so um, there's still days worth of work. Because overall I do have to cut 60 gears, but um, the nice thing is once you set this up, you can just sort of sit back and, uh, and watch. I've reached a milestone here, having cut uh, the 60 gears that I started out to cut. Um, about six weeks have elapsed from the time I began cutting the blanks out of the square sheets of brass uh, until this point. Um, a lot of the time was spent um, sanding and finishing and getting the, the right surface finish on these gears that I was looking for. Uh, but some of the process just takes a lot of time. There's no way to get around it. The uh, 147 tooth gear that you see down here um, is it just cutting the teeth is a three-hour uh, process uh, using CNC. Um, you know, some of the smaller gears, like in the upper left-hand corner, we're looking at a 19 tooth gear that obviously goes a lot faster. But anyway, this is a milestone, um, but we're nowhere near finished because next we have to make all the parts that connect all these gears together and turn them into an orrery.